<laughs> so correctly, I'm not new. People have known you by a different name recently. Um, I don't know if you've heard um, what the name is that you've been known as. I have heard, but uh, I chalked that off as immaturity. That's come from Eddie Hearn. Um, we'll jump right into things. Uh, we'll come on to big fight announcement that you've got later on. Um, tell me about the first time you met Eddie Hearn. Oh, I met Eddie Hearn a long time ago. The first professional um, relationship I had with him was when we put together um, Joshua and Klitschko. And it was a, you know, tough but pleasant negotiation. After that, did you envision working with him again? I'm obviously having Anthony Joshua, you mentioned the Vladimir Klitschko fight, big fight at Wembley Stadium, unification fight, or certainly a fight where two guys were on the line. Did you, did you have visions of working with him soon after that? Um, nothing specific. It came eventually that the right fight would be Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. And if that would have happened, I would be dealing with him. And going into it, I was excited about that because I know his father, Barry, for a long time. And the um, dealing with him for the Klitschko fight was fun. Tell me about the first conversation you had about potentially making Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. Well, I don't remember specifically the first, but he sent me a letter saying we'll do a two fight deal with you you'll fight Dylan White first and then you'll fight um, Joshua and I said okay what are the terms and he sent me back an offer for Dylan White and I said what about Joshua he said well I can't do both I can't guarantee Joshua I said, well, that's the whole premise. I said, otherwise, we don't have an interest. We would rather dictate our own career. Legendary fight promoter and the man behind Deontay Wilder, Chevy Finkel. I never thought I'd see this dude. Um, he has this uh, Al Heyman-like vibe, you know, stay, stay behind the cameras, thrown behind the throne type energy, and I like that. And, you know, I'm glad that the promoter finally spoke out about Eddie Hearn. Guys, I'm not an Eddie Hearn hater. I'm not. In fact, I like Eddie Hearn. I think Eddie Hearn is a step up from guys like Don King. If I'm willing to go there, Dana White. He's a huge step up from him, right? I will say this, though. Eddie Hearn does promoter type stuff, right? And when promoters do that kind of thing, I like it when the other side of the story is told before the narrative is painted by the said promoter, in this case, Eddie Hearn, right? I like the fact that they came clean about everything that happened, and I like how everything now adds up. Everything makes sense. See, when Eddie Hearn said what he said, I didn't believe him because he's a promoter. I analyzed what he said, and it made sense up until... He started blaming them. Because, my guy, if I offer you 50 mil to fight whoever, I'm going to fight 50 mil. I'm going to fight whoever just for that 50 mil, right? The way that he was going about it, he made it seem like everything they were doing was shady. The way Finkel is explaining it was real simple. He said, no, the reason why it looks shady is because that's the energy we were given. It, this, this is a two-way street. A dance involves two partners. If one is out of sync, definitely the other is going to be out of sync. So the fact that Eddie Hearn was going about it, claiming that Wilder was toying with them, I'm, I'm happy that Finkel set the record straight. Let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I am out. See that? See that? That's just the wrong way to look at it. Because Joe had his time. And Omar put an end to that. Then Marlo had his time, short as it was. And the police put an end to that. And now, motherfucker, it's our time. Mine's and yours. But instead of just shutting up and kicking in, you're going to stand there crying that back in the day shit. Jeez. There ain't no back in the day, nigga. 
Ain't no nostalgia to this shit here. It's just the street and the game and what happened here today. Right. When it was my uncle, I was with my uncle. When it was Marlo, I was with him. But now, nigga, what the fuck you do that for? Now we short the nine. That was for Joe.